it's pretty cold out today. It's pretty windy, but it's quite sunny. Um, and uh, as you can tell, there's quite a bit of frost on the car. So what we're going to try to do is uh, get it into the garage so that we can actually do some work on it without freezing our balls off. So let's uh, get to work. got the car almost into the garage but unfortunately there just really isn't a whole lot of room in between the sides for me to be pushing in the door jam and there's no place really good on the front of the car to grab onto so what we're gonna do is use my toe strap and I think I'm just gonna hook onto the sway bar uh, wrap around that and build myself a little bit of a harness on both sides and then uh, try to uh, become a plow animal and get it in the rest of the way or at least over this little bump right here because my driveway <clears throat> has a nice little downward angle that you can't really tell by looking at it but pushing uphill sucks either because either I'm weak or something is going on. So what we're going to do now is try to build a couple little shims to lessen that little divot and see if we can roll it up a little easier. I don't know how to stop it. Now we got the car in the garage. And one of the things I've wanted to do since the day I bought this thing is figure out if there's anything in the trunk. Uh, we already checked to see that our trunk button doesn't work. It thinks that the latch is open even though it's not. So we're gonna go ahead and start to work on trying to open the trunk. The first thing you have to do, these buttresses that go here, these have to come up and they're, they're latched with a little peg underneath. Uh, and then there is a, along this side of that peg, there is a bar that locks into it and we got to get a little pick down in there and tap it out so that we can pop these things up first before we can even attempt to get into the trunk. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get that happening first before we do anything else. So I'm going to use a little pick here that's about like this, and I'm going to try to get it in there and push this way uh, underneath so we can see if we can pop this up. And i got a hammer just in case I can't get enough force on it uh, just by pushing itself.
Success. Now that we've got this popped, you can see a little bit better. There's a peg here, right? A, a pin that goes in there. And if we look inside the hole here, we can see that that's that pin down in there. That has to go that way and need to be pushed out. Normally the electronic release does that for the trunk, but since that's not working in our car, this is what we had to do. So let's pop the other side and then uh, we'll see about opening the trunk itself. Now that we've uh, got our buttresses up, the next thing we have to do is take the rear tire off uh, on the uh, driver's side so we can get to this access port underneath. And once we pop that off, I'll show you where we gotta go and what we gotta reach for and talk about how to do the whole trunk release thing. Uh, first, what I'm gonna do though is clean up some of the leaves that are sitting on the back of this so that we don't get a dirty trunk, assuming that it's not already filthy because we have no idea what's inside of it. Now that we actually have the wheel off, the next thing we gotta do is take the fender liner out so that we can get access to the evaporation expansion port, which we're gonna have to reach our hand up and through and, and yank a cable that's actually in the trunk, the uh, human release cable. So let's pop that out right now. There's also a 10 millimeter bolt right there that we have to take out as well. So let's zip that off real quickly too. Inside the fender well, there is this uh, expansion port that we're gonna have to pop out and then reach our hand into uh, the trunk and see if we can find the emergency release gate. So this is pretty easy. It looks like there's just a couple of plastic clips and on the top and bottom that we just gotta press in uh, and it either pulls, it looks like it pushes in actually to the trunk, not pulls out. So let's give that a shot. Yeah, that was pretty easy. So this thing just popped right on out uh, and then I had to rotate it and pull it this way to get it out through the hole. But now I can reach my hand up in there and hopefully we can pop the trunk. Success. We got into the trunk. Uh, it wasn't that hard. I'll walk you guys through what I actually had to do where my arm was reaching uh, when I was down in the wheel well there. Inside the trunk, we actually have in this little hole right here, uh, that used to stick out into the carpet. What I ended up doing is reaching my hand through the hole on the side, pulling it through that little hole in the carpet, uh, and then I can yank on it. And here's our little pull handle, and it appears that we have got a, uh, if we look at this, somebody escaping from this trunk. I don't think a human being could fit in this trunk. Everything in here looks pretty good. There's some leaves that kind of got in from the little gap. There was a gap in the, uh, the trim line here, so it must have snuck in or maybe came in from down here and slipped in. Um, looks like, what is that? That's the air pump, so uh, for tires. But otherwise, nothing else really in here. Um, everything else is clean. No wetness that I can tell from in here. Uh, looks like it actually has like a little vac port here. So uh, so the top on these cars is not electric. It's a manual top. So now that my trunk is open, this should be pretty easy. I should be able to just undo the latch inside and flip it over. Uh, so let's pray that it's not damaged or bent or anything along those lines. I don't believe it will be. And look at that. 
We have a convertible. Yeah! Ah! The other thing I'd like to do today is see why our trunk pop wasn't working. Um, so we're gonna take a little bit deeper look in that. We're gonna hook a battery back up again, uh, get some power to it and see if we can see why the latch is not releasing to let the top up and down, or the trunk up and down. Uh, Cause otherwise I'm gonna have to take the wheel off every time I wanna take the top down and that seems pretty inefficient. This is uh, the actual latch itself and we can see that this is the release for it right here. So this gets pulled by a motor that is somewhere inside the car and that releases the latch in here. Um, we can probably test that uh, pretty easily now that we got it open by just sticking a screwdriver in the top there and seeing if we can get it to unlatch manually. Uh, but if we pull our inside one here, we can see that it pulls just as well. I'm, I'm right now pulling the, the latch that we looked at earlier. Um, so we know that that mechanism is actually working. So we just got to figure out where the electronics are and uh, track down if that's a good uh, relay, good servo, whatever it is that's actually pulling that. Digging into our fuse diagram here, first thing to check is uh, if we look up here, we got a trunk fuse, a 25 amp and a 5 amp there. And then we've got a trunk release relay at 18. And if we take a look over here, 9 and 10 are in this bottom row and 18 is right above it. So that's uh, that guy right there, that guy right there, and that relay right there. So first let's test the continuity on those two uh, and see if the fuses are actually good. And then we'll have to go and test the relay uh, to see if it's good uh, and if all this stuff checks out. And a lot of times we can just swap relays if the if that's the case, uh, if it's a bad relay and see if it works. But if all this checks out, then we know it might be a bad actuator itself. Um, so let's test all those cables. So our 5 amp is good. And our 25 amp is good. So next up is to test the relay. And again, I'm just gonna swap the relay and see if that makes a difference because we've got several relays that are the exact same uh, spec here. So let's swap this guy and this guy. Uh, odds of all the relays being bad are pretty low. Um, and honestly, we can go test them. We just need to go to the bench really quickly and throw some power at it. But we'll do that for right now and let's go test the trunk lid and trunk release now. So here's where our trunk latch is itself, and obviously it thinks it's open right now. Uh, and the latches a lot of times won't engage if they already think that they're open for some reason. Uh, so we got to replicate that. So I found a, you know, my my spike here that's about the same width, and then we're just going to stick that in the latch and trick the latch closed. So let's go down here, click it in, and let's see if we can get it to actually latch. This might be a little big. I think I might have to swap it for a screwdriver. I got a screwdriver that's a little less beefy. And let's see if we can latch that down. Yep, so we're latched down now, so it thinks it's closed. And if we pull the manual release, it comes right up, so no problems there. So let's click it down again all the way, and now let's go try our uh, release inside the car. Absolutely nothing. Great, so we have failed again. Unfortunately, our screwdriver is still very much stuck in there. Uh, so we know at this point that uh, either I have multiple bad relays, but that seems very unlikely with all the fuses being good and everything else firing up. Uh, more than likely, it's the actuator itself. So I'll have to do a little research and figure out where that actuator is. If it's down low in the body, it may have gotten damaged during the flood and that's probably why it's not working. I think what we gotta do is uh, first off, we gotta get into the trunk, which means we have to take all this carpet out, which is uh, all these little pop pins, so that we can get up underneath and uh, get to the rings on the outside, uh, these guys right here, and actually see that mechanism at play, and then see where the actuator is uh, for those, because maybe that's locked up first, because it's all part of the uh, exact same pop mechanism. Now that we've got the carpet out, uh, let's go take a look at the actual mechanism in here. So 
inside here, we've got these little mechanisms that uh, hook to the latch, and then la that latch gets pulled away to release those buttresses, and then this line here, and then that chases all the way along down here and down underneath. So I believe somewhere in here is where our actual actuator is, um, and I'm not quite sure how to get at that. So we pulled away a little bit here and uh, chased this cable down, and then I pulled back the boot and noticed that the actual line that does the release runs all the way back down through here into this boot and then comes back down out underneath here. So we can keep tracing that uh, and see where it goes by pulling the carpet around the outside. But my guess is it's gonna come back off and slave potentially off of uh, our latch here um, because of my guess is it all comes off in one big piece, but there may be a splice somewhere there and that's where our actuator is. So let's keep hunting. This little guy is just pressure fit down into a hole and that's just a vent drain. If we look, we can take a look inside the top uh, when that's straight up and down. Kind of hard to see from this angle, but still allow water to drain out and not uh, accumulate in the top. And as soon as I take that off on each side, I have access to the whole mechanism here. So I'm gonna go pop it on the other side as well. And this just kind of comes out by yanking because it's just pressure fit. Uh, and now we can hopefully get access to the carpet all the way up and down. So let's uh, try to take the entire rear carpet out. What we've got is a bar uh, right here. And these two Allen head bolts are, you can see that there's something that wraps around those. It looks like it's a tie down for the uh, top itself to help it auto tension. So if I remove those from both sides, I can take this big bar out of the middle, then I can probably disconnect the latch and then I can probably flip this whole entire top mechanism back and get full access to the back of this to start chasing things. So that's what we're gonna do next. For anyone looking to do this in the future, these are five millimeter uh, Allen head bolts. Uh, or nuts that are coming off of here. And you can see it's uh, it's a loose now. So now we just got to figure out how to slide it out. Uh, and get it free here. That's that. Got it. All right. So now that that's free, let's try the next bit. So now this is free, but it's hung up on the stud over on the other side. Flip this up, and then here's this stud right here. This is just slid on, and now the whole thing just flips up like that, and we have full access. I'm not, I'd be willing to bet that's our actuator right there, and I bet you that's what's busted. So let's uh, figure out a way to hold this in place, and we'll just put some weight on the roof and maybe a zip tie around here with something. So let's, let's find something to get this out of the way real quick. We have fabricated up an exceptionally fancy roof holder, some zip ties, and an old toolbox that has some weight in it from, God, I don't even know what's in there. Diving a little deeper here, so here is our trunk latch mechanism itself and uh, it's working fine we can see that it works and if I stick the screwdriver in there it's in there and then I can just pop it right out with my hand boom comes out so we know that's good then we got over here this line runs over and runs into that mechanism uh, we can see there and it's just a two-wire line my guess is that this is just the sensor that tells the car whether or not that thing is closed and uh, if we can test that really quickly with a continuity check, because my guess is when it's open, those are open, and when it's closed, those are closed. And this is touching this post. Nothing right now with it closed. Okay. Now let's pop it. I think I, think I was just hitting my own multimeter inside there because I didn't have enough light. Yep, there we go. So when it's open, this sends open continuity. When it's closed, it sends closed continuity. Uh, so we can trick it really quickly um, into thinking it's closed by just jumpering this cable really quickly. So let's jumper this, and then we can go see if our gate open sensor inside the car is actually still saying gate open. 
what I've done here is just built a really quick jumper on that uh, cable so that now the car thinks that the latch is closed regardless of what happens. And what we can do now is hop into the car and see if my assumption is correct. Turn the car on. Yes, we know the door is ajar. But what happens when I press the button? Uh, it does still say gate ajar. All right, so there's some sort of signal that's feeding back that is uh, telling us that the uh, that jumper is not working properly. So let's, uh, just for the sake of testing, let's press our button. But yeah, I doubt it does anything. Okay. Well, we're getting in here. This whole big mechanism here looks like it's on one plate. Uh, there's a 10 millimeter right here, a 10 millimeter right here, and then another one that's hidden up behind this plastic thing. That I can't really get to, it's underneath there. And then hopefully I can take this entire mechanism off and take a look a little bit more closely at it and then start to test some of the electronics that are in there and see if I can get that working. Uh, absolute worst case, what I can always do is run the trunk pop mechanism uh, because it is right here on a hard line and there's plenty of room, I can just run that back into the, uh, the compartment here and just leave it hanging out. This is a track car. I don't necessarily need an electronic hood pop. So if we don't get too far on this in the next little bit, that's what I'm gonna do. Here is the actual unit itself, and we can see there's two different actuators on here, and they're both tied to the same arm. So it's probably, uh, let's see, is there a way for these to work independently? No, I think it's just for extra torque. Both of them fire at the same time, because it doesn't seem to be any way for them to not fire at the same time. So, and they're wired into the exact same circuit. They're just wired in, in uh, parallel here. So what we're going to do is see if we can give some 12 volt power to it uh, right here and see if we can get them to actuate. I just realized that there's actually a third actuator on here as well. So that's this guy up here on the top. Uh, and then so these two big ones, I think, are doing the actual uh, guides for the buttresses because that's the longest amount of torque, I think. And this one's probably the trunk latch itself. But we'll test all of them and see if we can get them working. Put it on the bench here. I've got a good known battery uh, that is out of my truck. That's a sad story for another day. Uh, and uh, here is our system and I've hooked up some leads to our input on the motors real quick. I don't know which way is which, so we'll find out. We'll just tap it and see what happens really quickly. Uh, so I'm going to flip this over carefully so that we're not binding anywhere. And uh, now we'll give it a test. We got some good news. That means that our motors are good. We got some bad news. That means it's somewhere in the body control computer. The signal's not being sent to actually open them. Uh, so tracking more of that down. We'll test the other motor really quickly as well, just to see what the story is there. But my guess is we're going to see the same thing, and that this is more of a body control module thing than it is a uh, actual motor thing. No bad news. We got two good motor, three good motors, and we don't know why this isn't sending. So points back to the body control module, probably there's a button that connects to that. That then sends it out. So we might have to check some fuses uh, inside the car and see if maybe there's anything in there that might be fried on the new body control module we put in. Uh, we'll see. Um, I may just say screw it though and run this all manually because let's be honest, this is a track car. Uh, next thing up is... This thing almost looks exotic, and it's a Saturn.